Hey guys, welcome to a new vlog. We are leaving Italy. Uh, we are on our way to Slovenia. We are going to the capital Ljubljana. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it in English, something like that. Um, and uh, we will be attending the polyglot conference there. I want to say right away that, uh, well, what is a polyglot? Maybe some people don't know what that is. Uh, a polyglot, uh, some people argue about what the definition of a uh, polyglot is, but in my mind it's just somebody who uh, speaks more than two languages, maybe. Some people say more than one foreign language, uh, so more than one language that's not their native language. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the main idea of this conference is just that these people, uh, people that go to the conference, they love to, to study languages, uh, to, to learn new languages, and of course to use them. Uh, I consider myself one of those people. Uh, I speak um, five or six languages, more or less. I mean, um, of course, all of them are on different levels. I, my native language is English. Then I have uh, French. Now my, my Russian is much better than my French. Um, and then uh, Brazilian Portuguese. I love Brazilian Portuguese. And then, yeah, a bit of Spanish. We traveled for about seven months in Spanish-speaking countries. And uh, yeah, knowing Portuguese, it's, it's not too hard to, to understand and communicate in Spanish although I can't um, write, uh, write books in Spanish, of course. And then uh, Ukrainian. I lived for Ukraine in two year, uh, for two years, so uh, I, I can uh, understand it quite well, uh, but I, I haven't spoken it for quite some time, so uh, yeah, that's probably my weakest language. Uh, I'd love to learn more. Recently, I haven't uh, studied that much. Um, but I do want to get back to it. I definitely do. If we ever live in other countries, I definitely always want to uh, study the language, uh, the local language, and uh, we definitely plan to do that. Uh, anybody can come to this conference. There's a few, actually, just, just so you know, uh, for future reference, there's the Polyglot Conference that's been happening, I think, for five or six years now uh, in different countries every year. Last year it was in Iceland. And uh, there's the Polyglot Gathering that I also went to. Uh, it was in Slovakia. It's been in Slovakia for the past few years, but uh, I think it might be in another country next. And uh, there's one in Canada that's also been going on for uh, two or three years called Lingfest. And yeah or Langfest, I think it's Langfest. Uh, I'll, I'll put links to, uh, to the websites if I can find them so that maybe you can come next time and maybe we'll even see each other there. And last time I went to the Polyglot Gathering, Eva wasn't with me and I really like, regretted that she didn't come with me. So I'm happy that she'll be with me this time. Um, and what languages do you know? Because I, I don't know if we've actually said that on the English channel. So my native language is Russian and uh... My second language is Ukrainian, and I do speak English now. Yes. And I, I can understand a little bit of Spanish and Portuguese. Portuguese? Portuguese? Portuguese. 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 Yeah. Uh, but just a little bit. And uh, I have a... Um, yeah, I, I just... Uh, I have a big desire desire to learn uh, languages, and I I think it's, uh, it's amazing to to understand people from different cultures, from different countries, and uh, I'm pretty sure that we will, um, yeah, we will learn more than we know now. We're coming up on the border. Uh, this sign says that Slovenia will be in 900 meters, and uh, that's talking about the toll. We have to buy another vignette. Um, there are some countries where you need a, a vignette. This is, that's what it looks like. Uh, for Switzerland and somewhere here we're gonna have to stop at a gas station or maybe there will be a special place on the border where we can buy this for uh, 15 euros I believe to uh, so that we can drive on the roads here. We could probably do it here, but yeah, yeah you can, it says vignette right here actually. I went in and bought the sticker um, In uh, Slovenia you can get uh, like for different periods of time. So we just got one week for 15 euros. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, here you can get like one week, one month, or one year, something like that. Okay. So, where, where, where do we have the date? Ah, I can see. Something. Yeah, she just like punched holes in it to indicate uh, the, the date when it expires. November, I don't know, October, whatever. I guess the summer right here is the actual border. There you go. Slovenia and the toll. 
and yeah it just says you need the vignette and here's the traditional speed sign 130 on the paved roads 110 on other ones and etc 50 uh, 50 in the uh, in the cities and gas is much cheaper here so we're uh, we waited to to fuel up in Slovenia it's our first time in Slovenia for, for both of us. Tonight we will be sleeping just outside of the capital, Ljubljana and in a hotel called Ambient Hotel. Uh, there's a sign, Ambient Hotel to Turn the right. right. Turn right. Mm -hmm. I think it's somewhere here. It says like to the end. Oh, okay. There it is at the end, that's actually, I can see it. Yeah. Ambient. We can see a typical Slovenian village. Yeah, nice little, little houses oh, yeah, it's all cool. around. You have reached your destination. We're here. Ooh, nice parking spot. There it is, Ambient Hotel. There we go. I was looking for the numbers on the doors, but they're not on the doors, they're on the floor. There you go. 205. Here we are. And uh, first impressions of Slovenia, by the way, beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful. So green, the roads are really nice. Yeah, and lots of lots of space, beautiful mountains, uh, I don't know, trees, lakes, and it's real fall now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think that uh, the drivers, they're more polite, I don't know how to put it, like, than in Italy, they're like more careful with the rules. So it's really nice, and I really enjoyed the roads. So there's a nice big bed, TV, a little closet, and a bathroom. And a beautiful view. Nice. We just went for a little walk in search of food. It's a really uh, sort of a little quaint neighborhood. Cute little houses. Well, some of them are actually not so little. And I think in about five minutes, we should find a couple of restaurants. We found some food. I got a burger and Eva got a mushroom soup. Bon appetit. Food again. Breakfast time. Nice little breakfast. We woke up so early. To, yeah. To be on time in the conference. I think now it's 7.30 or 7. Mm -hmm. And very soon we will leave. Yeah, it's a pretty full house today. Lots and lots of people. And we're on our way to the Polyglad Conference. Da -da -da -dum. Good morning. I already said good morning. Anyway, we're walking to the conference. Uh, we drove uh, into town. We're gonna stay uh, with a couple from couch surfing uh, for the next two nights. And uh, we left our car close to their place as far as we know. And it's about three kilometer walk. We're practically in the center of Ljubljana, I think. Uh, actually, all of uh, Slovenia only has about two million people, and in the capital, uh, counting the like the whole agglomeration, I think it's about five hundred thousand. So, not a whole lot of people around here. I think we are in the center right now. Lots of restaurants, cafes, different I don't know sculptures, fountains, churches, and. Uh, I really like Slovenia. It's so clean here and uh, not so many people, but of course it's early morning. But anyway, and there are some people and having excursion. Uh, lots of lots of bicycles, so it seems that it's pretty convenient, convenient way of transportation in, in Ljubljana. And I think that we are very close to the building where we will have our what we will have for the God conference today and tomorrow oh i can see <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful here do you like, I like do you it. like it here I like it. yeah my first impression is really really nice and water 
and it's weird because like one day ago we were on the coast in Italy and it was so hot uh, all trees are green and now you can see real fall yeah. beautiful you can see that with the uh, writing it can help all of these girls because you know it has like the least influence on this thing but you can do some crossover and like try writing what you hear you know um, if you write it first to begin with. This is one of the first people I've met. I, I've seen a few people that I already knew, but this is Svein from Norway. Where in Norway? Stavanger. And uh, where do you live now? You don't live in Norway? No, I live in Spain. Okay. Yeah. Um, ha, um, I don't even know what to say first. Like, what, what languages do you know? This is a conference about learning languages. <laughs> it's yeah. a hard question, I know. It, it's always a hard question. I, I think if we say languages that I'm comfortable with, uh, I'd say German and Spanish. Uh, and a touch of Dutch, but not really conversational. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, is, there, is there any language that you're studying now? Uh, yeah, I just studied Serbian for three months for the, uh, um, the Languages of Slovenia challenge that is a part of this conference. Ah. Uh, I also did some French and Japanese earlier, and now I will actually go back to, to Japanese again. Okay, so you're hiding a lot of languages. Yeah, Those languages actually, that you named are the ones that you really know well, yeah? Yeah, but the, it, it's. Yeah, kind of strange. The Serbian challenge actually actually motivated me to go back to Japanese because I saw what I was able to produce in a short time just studying, like keeping the one hour every day. Uh huh. And um, yeah, so now I'm really <laughs> excited about Japanese again. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, when did you like start learning a foreign language? I guess in, in Norway you have English from a young age. Yeah, uh, in English is second nature, you could say. And, and I used English in, in university with work since the dawn of time, you could say. Um, I tried studying German half a year in eighth grade. I, I learned how to sing Mein Hut, die Hatreiecken and the alphabet, and that was it. So I thought languages yeah, doesn't make any sense, it, it takes forever. And then I started, I tried again three years ago. Oh, wow. Less than three years ago. How old are you now, if you don't mind me? 30. 30, okay. Yeah, so I, I, I actually, the motivation for learning. A new language was not learning language, it was to spend time more efficiently. So I had 30 minutes each way to university and I thought let's let's try to learn something <laughs> instead of just, I don't know, listening to music or waste my time. So I found a, a language learning podcast and I got really inspired and then it just kind of went on and on and on. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So do you find it um, difficult to learn new languages now at, your, at the young age of 30? No, uh, I mean, everything, if, if you have the right tool and, and if you do it, you can do it the right way or the wrong way. You can do it the way in eighth grade, where you try to learn how to sing a song and, and uh, yeah, or you can focus on what actually matters. You can focus on learning how to communicate. And, and to, to add on to that, okay, I began three years ago, uh, but one year ago I didn't really have any strong language with confidence. It was at the point where I moved to Germany, started working in German in a factory where most people only speak German and I really had to communicate. That's when I learned how to, how to, I don't know, be efficient. It, it's also, yeah, you might have heard for every language you learn, it's easier. It's not only because you connect with other languages, but you also learn how can you communicate in an easier way. When I started in Germany, I would think, okay, I want to say this verb, I want to say this noun, and you try to do it very... Yeah, like linear, translate yeah. directly, yeah. Now I try and think more concept. I want to describe, okay, in a hotel, can I leave this bag here? You can say, is it possible to leave the bag here? Would you be able to keep it for me? Can I put it there? And there's like a million ways, and yeah. you just... Yeah, it's, it's a matter of practicing. So, cool. but of course, Western similar languages are easier, and I think with Japanese I would need more time before I would be able to find various ways to, to describe the same thing. So, long answer, but <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what is one thing that you're loving in language study, like a, a technique or just an activity that, that you've really been enjoying? Mm. Well, we, we, can, we can take uh, Serbian now that I did three months. One thing I really liked, and I haven't done that before, it was I had two teachers, online teachers, I spoke to each of them every week. Uh, the setting was informal, 
very strict. I do not accept any exercises or like teaching format, school format. I try to bring up as many questions as possible and I try to speak whatever I could speak in Serbian and as soon as I okay I know I'm missing this concept or this concept, it could be the future or whatever, I would say uh, so how do you say this in Serbian? And that was a really good way because you start from day one to interact and it really helps helps your mind to start thinking conversation and cool. then when you have that and you're not doing the lessons when you're in your car or whatever you still kind of think about the active language so it's very good to, to activate the, the conversation skills from day one awesome so that's going to be a high priority for my japanese as well try from the beginning just speak whatever you can bring a lot of questions from other studies and yeah cool Thanks, mate. The petition, it does to say you're, you've got flashcards, but you should be actually trying to recall. So you shouldn't just be rereading or re listening to the text. Anita is 66. She's learning Italian. But at her stage in life, she's finding it difficult to remember words in her first language. Her words, not mine. I've visited 33 countries, and that's how we call it now. For Italian? Who do you think my favorite Italian singer is? Now, you remember, I've known the Italian a long time ago. Lucio Battista. Everybody's waiting to make um, this card, introducing card, I don't know. Badge. Badge, okay. So John, and then you can put different stickers with a flag. So you can see that John's native language, mother language is uh, English, Canadian English. And then the, the best after native is Russian, and then Brazilian, Portuguese, and French, and then Ukrainian and Spanish. And this is Ivas. And this is mine, but yeah, this is mine, and I think I I I have Hussi, uh, and I think mine has uh, less than anybody. Russian is my mother tongue, then Ukrainian and English, and I put Canadian English. It's more familiar to me now. Everybody here has this kind of page, page, and I will try to show you how how it looks. So you see there are many different stickers with the flags of different countries and people keep choosing depend on what language do they speak. Can I film yours? Please? Wow. Thank you. Here's uh, an, a friend of mine actually um, we have uh, known each other for a little while we met at the last conference in person. Um, what's your name? <laughs> Jack. <laughs> uh, Jack's from the U.S. Where in the U.S.? From Michigan. From Michigan. Michigan. Yeah. And um, what do you do now? Um, I'm finishing finishing up my studies in Germany. Cool. Yeah. And you, what do you study? I'm studying uh, Slavic studies and Chinese. That's pretty uh, pretty diverse. <laughs> and maybe I'll just like try to get a close up okay, of sure. the badge here, so we don't ask you about all the languages. Yeah. But as you can see, sea uh, level. Just if anybody doesn't really know, sea level is very high. I and put German above that. German's like, was like eh, closer well. to native. Yeah. yeah. What, one thing I definitely want to ask is what, um, what like language learning method or um, I don't know activity is are you really enjoying recently? Um, I just really enjoy like, speaking. You know, just talking in the languages. Uh -huh. I mean, that's the most fun thing is for me, obviously. Yeah. But um, I also enjoy reading a lot. Like um, I've been buying a lot of books. Especially in Russian recently, trying to read more Russian. Uh -huh. So I don't know, reading is something fun to do if you don't have anyone to like talk to. I mean, you can always talk to yourself. But <laughs> awesome. Yeah. What uh, is there any new newer learn language that you're learning recently? Uh, this year I started learning Greek, but I haven't really been pursuing it that much. So at, like the Polyglot Gathering, I had a, I had Greek at the B level, and I put it. I've demoted it to an A. Okay. So, yeah, I just haven't been practicing it. That's like the newest one. 
What else should we ask? Jack, how much do you study like every day? Languages, I, I mean. I really don't like study. Um, sometimes, like if it's a new language, I will. More than anything, I'll like, just like watch a lot of YouTube videos in like in languages or I'll read books, you know? So it's not like actually like active studying per se. Okay. Yeah. It's not, maybe it's not what people often imagine as studying, right? Yeah, exactly. So how, how much do you spend on that stuff? Like in other languages doing things like that? I should spend more time on it. I don't know. Not like, I don't know. I can't even say, it's hard to say. Like if I had more time, like for example on the way here I've read like a lot. Um, at home, I don't know, I would say like maybe an hour, day, but like not even probably that much honestly if you were to average it out. Oh. I don't know though. Tell us about, um, uh, I don't know, maybe an interesting story when a language came in handy or um, an unexpected uh, opportunity came up to use a language. Okay, um, well like one time I remember I was in the Detroit airport waiting in line to go through like the passport check um, and they made an announcement like asking like, does anyone here speak Chinese? Like, do we need a Chinese translator? And I was like, oh. Well, I kind of speak Chinese, but like I've forgotten so much. So I like was quiet for a second, and like they couldn't find anyone. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll go and I'll try. <laughs> so I went up there and I was like, well, you know, I um, probably not going to know like a lot of technical terms. So but if, like we keep it easy, I can like do it. But then there was like, it was just like an older Chinese couple, and um, they didn't speak any English. So and all I had to like translate was like, how long are you going to be here? Um, like, how much money do you have with? You, which is, that was kind of difficult actually because Chinese numbers are very confusing, but um, it's fine. And uh, yeah, it's relatively basic questions, but the Chinese couples are very happy and whatnot. I'm sure, yeah, they're very grateful. And that happens like a lot with like, for whatever reason, Chinese, like go to a Chinese restaurant and speak in Chinese, people get like very excited, and, you know. So that's one situation. Yeah. yeah. Yogurt. 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 Ka. 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 Kiwi. Kiwi. L. L. Limona. 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 Ma. 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 Nos. Nos. O. 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 Opera. Opera. P. 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 Park. Park. This is Tim, uh, living in Japan. How long have you lived in Japan? 37 years. 37 years. And, um, what, I mean, I'll just show your badge and sort of, sort of show like you have massive experience with so many languages. But uh, what is um, a language like m learning method or activity that you've really been enjoying recently? Um, okay, while I was doing yard work, I used uh, 50languages.com. They, uh, you know, have a phrase in one language and give you it to another language so you can choose, you know, the origin, the target. And so I use. Slovenian as a target language for about eight other Slavic languages from Russian, Ukrainian, Polish, and then also I switched it around, and so I hit about, I, yeah, it was eight or nine uh, Slavic languages in comparison with Slovene. So uh, I enjoyed it because it was really screwing with my head, and but I, I know that it would mix me up uh, when I actually wanted to use it actively, but it, it really increased my passive knowledge. So like when I listen to uh, SBS radio, whether it be Slovak, Slovene, Ukrainian, uh, Russian, whatever, then my comprehension is very high. Yeah. And so um, yeah, I enjoy that type of passive activity. And because I always know from you know, many years of experience that just make, takes time to make it active. And if you have a passive understanding of a language which hits you know, 60, 70, or 80 percent, then you may be getting into it, uh, using it daily for a couple of months and you start to get you know, quite good at the language. About, uh, about how much time per day do you spend on language learning activities? Well, well passive and active, mainly passive because I, I guess I'm driving to university, so it's about a 15 minute drive. Mm -hmm. um, I always have some language playing. I'm usually using the language that I'm going to use next. So I was mainly listening to uh, Slovene. Cool. Um, and then when I have some time, I might sit down and and you know go through like textbook and grammar. But that's that that's the hardest for me to concentrate. You know, my mind starts going. Else, you know. 
So most of the time it's just when you're doing something else, passive, passive listening. Yeah, but sometimes I, I make it passive. Let's say that I'm listening to it doing yard work for seven or eight hours. Mm -hmm. And we have a big yard, a big orchard. And so maybe 30% of that will be quite active as I'll repeat it. If I've heard the story again, I'll think about what they're going to say next. And then I'll notice the differences between the two between two languages like that, like mostly the Slavic languages. Uh, and, and then I like, try to jump ahead and, and, you know, and sometimes shadow it and things like that. Cool. So yeah, it's, a, it's a mix. And cool. sometimes I space out thinking about something else, even though it's going into my ears. I, I don't think that's very productive at that time. It's good for the melody if it's your first, uh, if you don't know the language that well, but you're just trying to get used to the prosody, so it makes it easier, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. yeah, that can be enjoyable. It's just like the background music, you know? Cool. Is, can you think of any, uh, like a, an unexpected opportunity to, to use a language? Or a time maybe where uh, a funny situation where you understood somebody and they didn't expect that you'd understand them or something oh, like that? that all the time, yeah. Yeah. yeah? Yeah, because I'm in Asia and I don't look so Asian. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I catch people talking about me all the time. Yeah. Uh, well, just just today, um, when I was getting uh, breakfast uh, over here, uh, two Japanese girls came in. They're studying. We, we afterwards had a long conversation. Uh, one studying music, the other was studying German literature in in in, um, in Vienna. Yeah. And uh, so they were talking in Japanese, and then um, I just sort of answered the question that one had asked the other and she didn't know in Japanese and it was like, you know, so then, <laughs> and, and I mean, Japanese is the language that I've spoken most hours in my life, so I slip into it quite naturally. And so, you know, the Japanese are always surprised, so I have to explain to them so that, you know, I said, look, you know, I, as I said, I've been speaking Japanese longer than you have, but they're native speakers and I make mistakes, okay, there's different, yes, yeah, right? yeah. but still, um, you know, they're always surprised at, at, at the level um, because naturally it takes, yeah. Cool. And you're a professor in Japan, yeah? Yeah. yeah. What do you teach? Uh, Cross-cultural management is my field, but I have international accounting and, and economics. And uh, for MBA, I teach uh, well, cross-cultural management and communication. Um, and basically, it's all taught in Japanese, uh, except in seminars, I use different languages. Like I have uh, nine languages in one seminar huh. and make jokes in various ones like uh, Chinese, Vietnamese, and uh, Thai, and, and so on. Cool. Yeah. Thanks so much. One of the, like probably the only bad thing about a conference like this is that it is so loud. I don't know if you guys can hear, but this is, it's always so, so loud. It's sometimes even hard to hear the person that you're talking to. Today the Ljubljana Marathon is going on. So how the roads are. A lot of roads are closed off, so we just came into the city, it's a Sunday so we can park for free, but we won't be able to leave until after 4 I think, because everything's going to be closed off. There's the most uh, famous castle I guess it's called, and there are lots of people getting ready to run. We're on a marathon today. So I, it's hard to, to get this man alone, but uh, I have just a minute to, to talk with Richard, who is uh, Richard Simcott, the organizer of the uh, Polyglot Conference. It's like hard to even uh, help people imagine uh, what your experience with languages. You, do you not have your badge with you? You have a badge? I do. Oh, there it is. In fact, what I've done this year is I just gave it to the guys to make up the languages <laughs> that are on it. So they put English and Macedonian, which are two of my home languages. But what they've done is they've put lots of random flags and actually speak none of the languages on there. Okay. Um, and I think it's fun because what I find is when people talk about me, they add languages or change up or down whatever I speak. Yeah. So it's kind of an ir ironic statement. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I'll just put a link to one of the videos. You have a, an older video where you speak like how many like 19 or yeah There's one where the very first one I did I made 10 years ago um, ten I years. just I just selected 16 of the languages I'd studied yeah. at different levels and spoken. Wow do you, So 10 years have gone by do you think that you, you would add more since then? Possibly. Yeah, um, I've studied probably over 50 but like as in studied at different levels and for different reasons um, But I mean I, you know, I, use, you, I use five at home. Awesome. Normally. Um, what is a language uh, learning method or activity that you've really been enjoying recently? Um, recently I've been full on with the Polyglot Conference, yes. I've got to be honest, so yeah. any free time I've had after work has been dedicated to 
organizing this event. Uh-huh. But um, what I like is learning bits of languages to go and communicate. So I was trying to learn Romani. Uh, actually, for this event, I was going to do three months. I was very ambitious. I managed a month of it. Uh, and then the last two months before this event, I was just full on yeah. organization. I bet, yeah. Um, but I love when I do that and I go and speak to people who use the language, the reactions I get. And that's why I do it, what motivates me, and I love it. That's one question I want to ask. Maybe you can think of uh, an, um, an unexpected opportunity that you had to use a language or, or a time when people were surprised that you knew their language. Any, any story that comes to mind? Actually, it happens fairly much on a daily basis in the Balkans because I, I, I don't look like I'm from the Balkans. Okay. And so when I speak a Balkan language, people are quite surprised. Um, but yeah, a really nice time was I was um, actually getting a, tra- a, a bus from the north of the UK, from Chester, where I'm, where I'm originally from. And I was going to London and there was a, a deaf lady uh, waiting. It was like 11 o'clock, nearly midnight. So everything was closed. There was just uh, the two of us waiting for the bus. The bus arrived and I, I communicated a little bit in British Sign Language. So I studied it a long, long time ago. And um, she didn't speak English and obviously had no pen and paper with us. And so when the bus driver arrived, I was able to translate for them. Cool. And that was really nice. Yeah. And it, that gave me a warm, fuzzy feeling inside. So I understand you've been really busy with the conference recently, but um, if you can imagine a more calm period in your life, um, how much time would you usually spend a day doing language learning activities? It's interesting, actually, because the question comes up every now and again mm-hmm. you know, about how much time. And I don't really think of the time because I think it's like if you love something that much, you know, I'm, you've got people who want to learn a language or two because they need it for whatever reason or they want to learn it or they like that culture. Whereas I'm kind of more on this, I just love all languages all the time. So I don't really count the time because it's, it's enjoyment. It's like, it's like saying to somebody how much, how many times do you snack or, or it's, sometimes it's hard to, to say and quantify exactly when you've done things mm. or when you've watched bits of TV or when you've heard certain things or if you ask them to document it, some people will maybe can, but for a lot of people, you know, how many football matches do you watch a week or how many, and it's not always easy to, to say, okay, exactly this number of minutes or hours. Mm-hmm. I just keep doing it and I'm always thinking about my mind. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people would be curious, uh, what does a person with so many, that knows so many languages, what, what's your job? So I work for a social media management agency called The Social Element and I work as their languages director. So what we do is um, give advice and help uh, international clients uh, carry out their marketing strategies, engagement strategies with uh, the, the people who use them by their products uh, over the internet, so social media. And I would help on, from my side with the international linguistic elements of that, so uh, doing that over diverse markets, linguistically and culturally. Because next year the Polyglot Conference is going to be held somewhere very special. And the location of next year's Polyglot Conference is going to be a very worthy successor <laughs> to the places that we've been before. Can we lower the lights, please? Because the Polyglot Conference 2019 is going to be held on the 18th, 20th, <laughs> 2019. I mean, the Polyglot Conference 2019 will be held where the sun goes down, the sun must rise. So we will see you in... Be careful with this one. <gasps> you don't want to mispronounce it. I'll let you do it. <laughs> Fukuoka! <laughs> Conference is over, and uh, Eva's been wanting a hot dog all day. So she saw a place this morning, and uh, and and we got hot dogs. It was closed till 2 p.m. Yeah. So now it's exactly the right time. So double take means uh, like enjoy your meal. Bon appetit. Mm. The Bertek. We were hoping to go uh, to stay another night in Ljubljana to uh, go to Italy tomorrow, but uh, it turns out that the um, the Russian embassy doesn't work tomorrow. So uh, we're going. Well, the Russian consulate actually doesn't work tomorrow. So we're going to Italy today. Um, we're going to stop somewhere along the way, probably just sleep in the car and uh, pick up my visa tomorrow. 
and that's it. I'll, we'll end this vlog with a, a brief summary of uh, our experience at the Polyglot Conference, uh, but for now, um, bye bye. I guess I really don't have that much to add about the, the conference in general, but I gotta say it was a good experience. Overall, uh, first and foremost, I guess, about Slovenia and Ljubljana, uh, we were only there for, I guess, three nights, but still, um, really impressed, you know, such a small country with two million people, um, clean, uh, well kept, and uh, one thing that I liked is uh, I asked um, uh, the people that we stayed with, we stayed with the family uh, on couch surfing, we didn't show them, uh, but we had a, a great time talking with them, they have six kids and they live in a really nice home, and um, I asked if people leave uh, Slovenia a lot, you know, if, uh, like, what's the general feeling? Uh, are people trying to, to move to other countries because it's part of the EU? And if they want to, they could move to any country in the EU and just live and work there. And uh, our, our host said that most people seem happy to stay here. Of course, some people leave, but some of them then come back. And uh, and I think that's, uh, that's a really good sign when people are happy to stay where they're at. Uh, I mean that the conditions are good and life's good so uh, but the conference uh, was great I mean I've seen so many talks uh, both in person and online I'm kind of like an obsessive person so when I got into learning languages I just like studied everything I possibly could so the talks are a little bit less interesting to me but the most interesting thing is just to be able to meet so many people that are so passionate about languages in one place uh, and exchange ideas and uh, and stories especially you know who's who's done what where you know a lot of the people uh, at, at this conference for example are living in other countries so I would say even the people like from Europe a lot of them are living in other countries you know and, and speaking and learning languages of those countries and uh, to me that's really interesting so it's really interesting to sort of bounce ideas uh, back and forth and uh, overall it's great I think anytime that um, at least that I'm near a place where a conference like this is gonna be happening then I will probably go uh, I'm not sure if like we'll come from Canada to Europe for this conference but in Canada they have their own conference uh, like I, I think I mentioned at the beginning um, the uh, Langfest I think it's called in Montreal so um, definitely uh, definitely I will attend more in the future and I feel inspired I uh, definitely want to get studying a language soon. Something I think about a lot. Hopefully, hopefully it actually happens uh, soon that I'll finally start a new language. What about you? Do you uh, have any comments about the co conference or I don't know, Slovenia? I don't know. I, I completely agree with you. I think I have nothing to add. And it just for me, it was a unique experience. I'm not a polyglot. I never was into languages and all this stuff. So I was like a support for you, more more like a support. But um, it's almost impossible not to be inspired when you see so many different people who speak different languages, who are so curious and interested about uh, other others' cultures. And it's amazing because like it seems there's no borders inside their minds, inside their heads, and I really like it. So they don't have those stereotypes about countries, and they they don't follow those political stuff on the TV. They just they just try to communicate as much as possible with different people from different cultures and uh, yeah, I really admire it and uh, I hope to learn more languages in the future and I really, really like Slovenia and I uh, enjoyed the, the capital, Ljubljana I think it's a very special and unique capital We are in Italy, we're in the Piedmont region and uh, we're actually here for the second time but uh, we're staying with this uh, lovely family here we have Claudia. Oh, I started with Claudia, and then their two lovely daughters. And this is Tanya. Tanya is from uh, Riga, Latvia, and Claudia is is from here, an Italian. And we just got pizza. Real Italian pizza. Real Italian pizza. And I was a bit surprised. I didn't know that they usually don't cut it. So and they usually give you a whole pizza. So as we understood, like each person uh, orders like whole pizza for himself. Mm -hmm. And you just uh, cut it and then eat with your hands is what yeah, they said. Yeah, Claudia told us that you need to eat with your hands. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know this. This is just for cutting a piece. Yeah. 